nice that the rain stopped for a minute, but it is a muddy mess out here. Several bucks over here, but the one I'm looking for is, a, he's six this year and kind of split his left beam and stuff and looks you know, quite a bit bigger than he's been in the past, but you know, I don't know how much chance. He's not one that's real regular either. It's kind of like the derby that I'm hunting, the other big one. You know, they've been around for a long time, but they're not like super regular where you get them every, you know, pictures of them every day, so. Either way, the rednecks at least keep us out hunting today. This rain, it's either gonna shut them down or it's gonna bring them out like crazy. So we're about to find out and better hurry up over there. We're about ready to get poured on again. Now this buck over here on the North 80 has been here for five years. You know, we've been watching him since he was a two-year-old. He was always kind of a nice 10. He had good potential even as a young deer, but he didn't change a whole bunch. He just had a couple stickers kind of off the bases of his twos. And he was always a nice buck. And even last year when he was five, he was on our hit list, but he's been so irregular. I mean, over all those years, you'd get pictures of him in the summer, you get to hunting season, and you could hunt there 100 days and never see him. I'm not really anticipating seeing him, even though he's been fairly regular over the summer. I'm just assuming that when it comes to hunting season that he'll go vacant again, but you never know. I'm just assuming there was no way we're gonna see him. And all of a sudden, there he is. Here could possibly be the biggest deer of my life, standing in the same field as me. You think of all the hours of work and time, you know, the food plots and cameras, just thousands of hours of work all coming down to this moment. Hey, here comes the deer right here. Oh, that's him, that's him, that's him. standing there at 65 and he's reaching back and scratching his back. I was like, perfect, they come to full draw on him. He starts walking, he takes a few steps. I already had full draw, so I wanted to let down and, and rearrange him because every other buck, they come out and they come and hit those scrapes over there, walk in the woods and pop out on the north end. So I was like, he's not coming any closer. So I didn't want to let down and have him keep walking even further. It looks like he hit him a little farther back than I wanted, but still it's through the middle of his body. It's just the rain has stopped for a little bit now. You know, you just like to maybe leave a deer like that for a few hours, but I just don't know if we can. That's the problem. It's just when it starts pouring rain again, you know, we're not gonna find any blood. Shoot. When he stepped out, he was so much bigger and heavier to me than I thought. And everything happened so fast. The shot, it was over in a second. And to me, the shot looked like it was maybe a little far back and a little low. Your, your mind is just racing, you know. What just happened, did it just blow it? I don't know. I just hope it did enough to get him on the ground. We got you know, blood all the way up into here. 
spreading over on here. That's what nice thing about using that tri pan. I mean, a little bit bend in the blades, but nothing in the ferrule. But that evidence is we got a lot of blood. God, there is blood everywhere. Oh my gosh, look at this. Not a flesh wound there. You know, I just couldn't tell, you know, when he when I shot, he was quartering away and I was aiming towards, you know, that last rib to drive it up in there. But he moved and ducked a little bit. I hit him farther back than I wanted to, but this is a great sign. He must have stopped here. Look at that. Unreal. Oh, right there. Holy, he's right in the ditch right there. <laughs> yes! Golly! My first time in hunting this deer. <laughs> Look at that side. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> yes! God, look at that thing. <laughs> what a giant. My first whitetail of 2017 has hit the dirt on October 10th. Yes! Look at that. No, let's go see Daddy's deer. Hi, Daddy! Hello. Hello. Daddy, what's Daddy got? Hey. He's got a big buck. Hey, you! Look at that big boy. Congratulations. Thanks. All right, you gotta turn your head first. I gotta untie this and stuff. Okay, Daddy, we're not looking. Can I peek? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Daddy, Look at this. Daddy, what's this? Daddy buck. That's Daddy buck. Look at that big one, huh? Yeah, look at those big horns he has. Boy, boy. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, it's a good Daddy one. Daddy Buck. Huh? Yeah, Daddy Buck. Nine. Yeah. Holy cow, that's just on the two. Plus 6.25, 22. 22.5. 102 inches on that side. 102 inches on one side. 0.25. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't think he'd be that big, but well, the way it's like 102, inches or yeah, and it's gonna be an 80 like, inside uh, there, I guess. Your biggest Iowa buck ever. What a yeah. Big. What a season that. you're having, Mikaski. I just smoked Gnarls Barkley. What a beauty of a buck. <sighs> Look at that thing. 35, 40 years ago in northern Minnesota, I mean, it would just would have been a dream of mine to see a 140 or a 150, to move to Iowa and be able to manage and see great deer. And kind of the pinnacle of deer hunting is to hit that 200 inch mark, you know? And that's something that, you know, you always dream about doing, but you never think it'll actually happen. To hit that final equal and see a 201 come up, it's unreal. It's something that never dreamt in my wildest dreams 40 years ago that that would ever happen to me. You know, after all the years of watching Lee pass giant bucks, shoot giant bucks, all the blood, sweat, tears, all the work he puts into all of our farms to make them so great, and for him to finally shoot his first 200 inch buck, I'm so glad that I was able to share that experience with him because it was definitely unbelievable. I'm so happy for him.